A sea change is really, I mean, over the past 10 years, 10 to 15 years, I mean, it, it's, it's almost unrecognisable from what it was in the past. Um, the, for me, the big developments were in, with the launch in 98, 99 or so of the programme for research in third level institutions called the PRTLI. Um, really a very innovative programme which really emphasised the development of the infrastructure across the country in third level institutions. Across, we've, we've, we're in the middle of the fifth cycle of that now, and over those five cycles, they've invested 1.2 billion into, as say, the, it, it's not it's not discipline specific, so it's just to, to increase the capacity of the third level institutions, academia, to engage in research and support. Um, so it, it, it's that kind of platform then provided kind of the basis on which kind of something like the Science Foundation Ireland and Enterprise Ireland and the other more specific kind of bodies like the. Uh, Health Research Board, the Environmental Protection Agency. So it was really that platform on which kind of infrastructural platform that allowed the quality of research to be able to develop. Um, very importantly, it, it, it for the first time probably, certainly in our recent history, it allowed us to retain kind of research expertise and top class researchers in Ireland, but also to attract them um, from abroad. And suddenly Ireland was on the map in terms of somewhere to go and carry out world class research. You know? um, in the DIT, under cycle one, we set up the Focus Research Institute. That was, about, that was an investment of uh, 10.5 million. And that was really to bring together and support a lot of the, a lot of disparate research activities in the sciences, but also in engineering. Um, it's a building of 120 people or so we house, although we're going to extend it now under cycle four of that to uh, house another 50 people. About the emphasis really on supporting the postgraduate research, so of the 120, about 70% of those are postgraduates. But we also provide a lot of support then for the, I suppose, the, the industrial sector, both in terms of consultancy, but also developing partnerships with multinationals and SMEs, and also trying to spin out our own kind of activities. The emphasis in that stage, I mean, through the, the, the early 2000s or so, was really on trying to get the individual institutions to really kind of build up their own capacity. So, so get their own houses in order, I suppose. Then. So in the later stages then, by 2007, was the cycle four of the PRTLI, which really then tried to build collaboration between institutes around the countries, around the country and, and, and to build up complementarities or encourage complementarities. So, so within DIT, we were invited into the uh, integrated nanoscience platform for Ireland and also the national biophotonics platform in Ireland. Uh, those were investments of 32 million and 30 million, of which DIT got 8 million total. And that really kind of, for the first time, I mean, now we're looking at a situation where Ireland can represent a united front, I suppose, in Europe in terms of this is what Ireland is doing in this spaces. Nanoscience, of course, is very, very uh, important. You mentioned earlier that it's, we're sixth in the world in terms of the, the nanosciences and nanotechnologies, but also the biophotonics is very important and it's going to be very important in the future as well and imaging technologies for medicine, etc. Um, from that, we're actually, we, we are involved in the Eurobioimaging, which is a, a European infrastructure um, going forward for mapping out the, the, a roadmap for, for research in the area in biophotonics and imaging in Europe. And actually, Ireland is the only country which at the moment has a national infrastructure which can represent all of it. But we're now, uh, and, and DIT included within Focus, we're, we're one of these access nodes for this. The emphasis nationally was, was on building complementarity, but also allowing the facilities that we have to have open access programs, both in terms of sharing each other's equipment, but also making that equipment open for use for the, for the private sector, for industries, but also for, for public bodies as well. Well, I think if you look at Ireland currently, it's worthwhile remembering that, say, a lot of the top industries, a lot of the industries in the world are based here in Ireland. So, for example, 10 of the top 15 pharma companies are based here. Similarly, the medical device sectors, the top global companies are based in Ireland, and similarly, the ICT sector. But in the National Recovery Plan, which was published by government last year, new sectors were identified, such as green technologies, 
um, also the creative sector and technologies for an aging population commonly known as silver technologies. So we do have the traditional sectors but also new sectors are developing. The government are currently carrying out a research prioritization exercise which will identify the areas where the opportunities lie for Ireland. And these are not only market opportunities, but um, these will be areas where we must make an impact on society, um, on the lives of all people here on the island of Ireland. So as Hugh says, if you look at DIT, um, we work in a broad range of sectors with a broad range of industries, right from pharma, through to the medical device sector, diagnostics sector, but also in the creative arts arena. I always say myself, it's, it's, it's not just about products, but it's about, I suppose it's a, it's a culture and, and we, we have a responsibility as well to, me to feed back the development into, into lifestyle and, and, and um, you know, we have this concept of a smart economy, but we also want a healthy population. So that's very, very important. Um, I think, I, I mean, Ireland has very, very, particularly in the more recent times, has developed a lot of strengths in, in the terms of the biomedical areas, um, the pharmaceuticals we have a good history in as well. So I think it's very, very important that the academia and that research infrastructure that we have, I mean, I mean, first of all, works with the public bodies as well, you know, with the food sector, with the health sector, um, the agricultural sectors, etc., and to support those first and foremost. Uh, that kind of collaborative thing then with, with, with across the public bodies, both academia and the, and the different state organisations, can then kind of work with the large multinationals and the, um, the SMEs and so. Um, as I say, in, in, in DIT we have a lot of expertise in that kind of more clinical technologies, let's say, and, and we're developing, for example, we had an award recently from Enterprise Ireland for the development of new techniques for diagnosis of cervical cancer. Um, we have groups who are working in the Crest organisation who came originally from Enterprise Ireland but are now based in, in Focus in DIT, uh, looking at, at coatings, paints for, for, for hygiene control, so for, for antibacterial, particularly the uh, MRSA. So as well as, so it, it's working with that kind of public sector but also looking at that to kind of develop products in that sense, I think that we've done a lot of in, in, in recent times. <laughs>